what is everyone hope everyone's doing well right when i hit live something weird happened in these headphones so i hope you can hear me hope everyone's doing well today we're going to learn a little bit about summer vacation in english all of those terms you might need to know if you're visiting the united states for summer vacation huge shout out to danny right off the bat i don't think she is watching today she is a channel member and she is in the united states right now she's in new york so i hope she's having a good time let's say hey to a couple people here because i saw them in the chat before audie was here hopefully he still is and he says that he's ready to learn which is great because i am ready to teach hope everyone here is ready to learn thomas what's going on maria Hope you're doing well. Betty Lou. Betty Lou is here. Welcome, Stacy. Hope you're doing well. Anya. Anya is here live. I know she's been very busy. Dennis, how are you, man? Hope you're doing well. Freddie Wolf, also from France. Leticia is here. Brazil. Brazil is in the house. And a quick shout out to all of the people living in the southern hemisphere that's what we call it in english if you're living at the bottom of the earth south america brazil argentina colombia i'm sorry you're getting ready for winter but the rest of us a little higher in the globe in the northern hemisphere we're getting ready for summer so fayez is here Fayez always adds good stuff to the stream. Judah, hope you're doing well. Germany is in the house. Danke, Shane. I think that's all I know in German. Danke. And Luke is here, of course, from Poland. Poland. I talked with one of my students last night. Their mom, she was born in Poland. Yeah, she had a little bit of a Polish accent uh, last night. My school, my middle school, had a dance, and I went there to chaperone. Yeah. The, in the members members chat, we have a Discord server. And uh, Maria, Luke, they've been members for a while. We go back and forth. There's Team Winter. Maria is part of Team Winter. She likes it when it's cold. And I know Luke and myself... We're team summer. So we're having a good time right now. Summer. Ah, Hamburg. Hamburg. The Beatles. They got their start kind of in in Hamburg. Anya says, hey, Brent, it's great to be here today and see you live. Oh, that's not. I'm sorry that I'm glad you're here, Anya. I'm glad you're here and able to watch live. But she said she injured her feet. I know she often watches these live streams on replay while she's working out on the treadmill. So, all right. Dunsnay says, can't watch, but we'll be thinking of you on the replay. Ibrahim, he's been with the channel for uh, two and a half years since the channel started. One of my first subscribers. Thank you so much. And Regis is here. Team Spring. Oh. Spring's good. Spring's good. It's almost like summer. It's like summer's little brother. Spring. Spring can be nice, though. Where I live, and I know in Poland where Luke lives, it can be wet during spring. So uh, when I used to live in the southern United States, spring was great. All right, let's get into this lesson here. Whoa. Hang on. There's a big, let's see. Manual. Oh, Manuel lives in a beautiful place, by the way. All right. Climate change. Ooh, I don't want to get too political, but uh, some people think climate change is political, but uh, things are getting warmer, right? Hard to, uh, hard to disagree there. Summer, Team Summer. Mega is here from India. Hope everybody is doing well. Let's get into the first slide here. The first slide is just introducing you to the lesson. And this is free, completely free. The great thing about YouTube is, you know, maybe you have to watch an ad, 
but then the rest of this lesson is going to be free. We have some flip-flops in the picture. We will talk about those soon. You have me in the picture, <clears throat> and I am wearing some sunglasses, and you can see my phone in the reflection of those glasses. I'm taking my own picture. I'm trying to look stern. The first one is amusement park. And for a lot of these, I will have a banner that will show up in the bottom of the screen. And you can use this to practice your shadowing or just get a little bit more information about the topic. And I like to put in these slides because if you can hear it, everybody can hear it on the podcast. Shout out to those on the podcast. But if you can see it, either here live or on replay, I think it will help you with your English. So the amusement park. One place you might visit in the summer is an amusement park. Six Flags is the name of a famous one in the United States. Every year, my school would visit a local amusement park in my state. It's called Funtown. I've done two lessons from Funtown, one on a roller coaster and one on this crazy ride that drops you. But unfortunately, for the last three years, we have not gone to this amusement park at the end of the year. I'm sure many of you can guess why we haven't gone. There are a couple reasons, but Ferris wheel. You could. You could ride on a Ferris wheel. If you look at that picture, I'll make it a little bigger. The ride on the left, the one with the blue sky behind it, we might call that a Ferris wheel. The ride on the right, we would call those bumper cars. Here's a sentence for you. You could ride a Ferris wheel or the bumper cars at an amusement park. At an amusement park. One of my favorites, that's the roller coaster. And a roller coaster is something we call a thrill ride. When you ride on a ride, it might give you a thrill, that feeling in your stomach that you can't quite explain, little bit of nervousness, a little bit of excitement. Roller coaster is one type of thrill ride. A roller coaster is one type of thrill ride. And this is one of the rides I am actually able to ride. A few of them, I can't. If there is the same motion over and over, like in a circle, or we have another ride called the pirate ship, and it, I mean, it looks like a pirate ship, but it goes back and forth over and over. Uh -uh. I will get sick. I cannot ride on the pirate ship anymore. Fun Town also has this ride we call the teacups. And it's literally giant teacups you sit in and spin. No, I'm out. I am not riding on the teacups. I don't want to say what I will do after riding the teacups. I'm pretty sure you don't want to know what I would do, but you could probably guess. And from time to time, I will check the chat just to make sure there are no questions. That's what a good teacher does, right? I might not have explained the topic perfectly. There might be some questions. Good teachers always check with their students to make sure there are no questions. And I hope I don't miss any. Sometimes I do though. Whoa, manual. Can I ask you, teacher, why are you always wearing a cap at home? Um, I think the last couple lessons, I didn't wear a cap, but today I do wear a cap. And um, sometimes you know, when you have hair, that's disappearing. You know, some people might call it bald. It's always good to hide it. 
So sometimes I do. Sometimes I didn't feel like fixing my hair this morning. So I said, you know, I'll throw on a cap. Who cares? Who cares? Uh, Faez says, weather is not as hot as it used to be. At the time of the year out in Istanbul. Well, that's good. There's something wrong. Yeah, that can happen. We're having pretty average temperatures, but sometimes you might get a a cold snap. I think next week's lesson will be about weather. We'll talk about heat index. We'll talk about cold snap. Not the regular English terms you might hear like rain and snow. You probably know those. We'll go advanced. Okay? We'll go advanced. Betty Lou, Team Summer, is in the house. Audi, I like summer. When I play the windsurfing, the wind blowed from the shore to the sea. It's usually strong. All right. Audi likes to windsurf. I can't do that. I would say I'm too old to windsurf, but I know Audi is older than I am, and he's in much better shape. Any questions here? Roger, glad to see you. Columbia, also getting ready for winter, right? Also getting ready for winter. Yeah, we, okay, manual. If we're talking about amusement park rides, you might hear that thing called the carousel. It has the horses going up and down, but you also might hear it called a merry-go-round merry-go-round carousel it's a little bit older term merry-go-round probably what you'll hear today hey looks like jamie's here jamie my wife we have summer vacation coming up so i think we might do some lessons together maybe even a live lesson all right ario is wondering yeah we mentioned hat or cap earlier question What's the difference between hat and cap? Nothing. No difference. You can use those terms interchangeably. Interchangeably. Uh, okay. Take a ride on something or to ride something. You can use both. Let's talk about the bumper cars. One of my favorite rides right there. Where are they? Bumper cars. So, hey, do you want to go, we might say, do you want to go ride the bumper cars? It's probably what I would say. Hey, when I get to the amusement park, I'm going to ride on the bumper cars. Yeah, so it just depends on how you use it, but you might not say take. Like, hey, when I get to Six Flags, I'm going to ride on the roller coaster. Yeah, do you want to ride on the roller coaster with me? Hope that helps. Is it, oh, Jamie says she has three and a half days until summer vacation starts for her. I have four and a half days. I have to go one extra day longer than Jamie. Um, no, America. Have, let me spell it out here. Merry go round. That's I think how we would spell that merry-go-round yeah because you're feeling merry or happy as you go around it yeah that's how you spell it just wanted to double check because we do also have the m-a-r-r-y but that means when you commit your life to somebody you marry them that's with an a so jamie and i are married hope that helps all right. Next one. Park. Summer and water always go together. High temperatures. You want to cool off in some way. A water park might be the way to do it. A water park and an amusement park are very similar. But the water park will focus on rides that have water makes sense right you might ride on a water slide 
if you go to a water park. In fact, that person in the picture on the left, actually there are two, they are riding on a water slide. They are riding on a water slide. Next one, season pass. Season pass. You might get a season pass for an amusement park or a water park. And what that means is you pay one price. It's usually a little more expensive, but you pay one price and you can visit that water park or that amusement park anytime you want. Right at the bottom, you pay one price for a season pass and you can visit the park for the entire summer. That's what we call it, a season pass. And I think right there, let me make it a little bigger. That is the amusement park near us called Fun Town. And you can get season passes there. You can also get something called a day pass. And that's exactly what it sounds like. You pay one price just for the day. You can only visit for that day. A day pass is less expensive, but you can only visit for the day. Jamie and I, we have two children. And when our children were younger, we would get season passes to Fun Town. We would drive down. It would probably take about an hour to get there. And we would spend the whole day there from open to close, open to close. Just checking the chat here. Oh, we, we might have Fayez is talking about a slip and slide. That is something you might have at home, a slip and slide. They are a bit dangerous, but a slip and slide is basically a tarp that you would put down on your lawn put some water on there, it becomes very slippery, and then you can slide on that. I'm wondering, can I find a picture of a slip and slide? And we usually call, we okay, this is, we usually spell it with an N in the middle. Yeah. All right, I can pull it up, I think. Just so you have a picture of what a slip and slide is, you would not find this at a water park. You would find this at uh, somebody's house. It just takes me a second to pull this up. All right, it should pop up now. That is what a slip and slide looks like. And you can actually see some prices for a slip and slide. So, oh, that's a cool one. But you need a big lawn for this. You want some nice grass. I think if you put this on the street, it might hurt quite a bit. Last week, if you saw the lesson, we talked about road rash. Yeah, if you put a slip and slide on the street, you are going to get some road rash. You want to put this on the lawn. And it will probably mess up your lawn because of all the water, but it would be fun for a little while, I think. Yeah, slip and slide. Faez, thank you. It's a good one. That's why I always, I always have to check the chat because there are so many good like bonus vocabulary words in there. All right. oh, okay, Jamie. Jamie, come on down. Come on camera. She just woke up, so she probably doesn't want to come on camera. She said some people will add dish soap to their slip and slide to make it faster and more slippery. Dish soap is exactly what it sounds like. The soap you use to wash your dishes. Dish soap. Not easy to say, by the way. Dish soap. Try to say that quickly. Dish soap. Miho, Miho is here. Yesterday was her birthday. Hey, while I'm thinking of it, let me do a quick shout out here. 
to all the channel members. Where is it? I think I can share this here. Yeah, let me go down this list really quick. Miho has been around almost since the beginning. Let's see. Here we go. Let's let's talk about some channel members here. We'll start right at the top. Huge thank you to you all. Let's do it. Thank you so much. These are the channel members. There's Mega. She's in the chat right there. Regis is in the chat. Audie, I think, is in the chat there. Freddie Wolf's in the chat. Rod, Shevket, Cecilia Angelo. So many people I've known. Danny, she's in the United States right there. Maria's in here now. Anya's in here now. Who can forget Bob the Canadian? Amina, Sam, and Miho. Luke's here too. So thank you, everyone, for becoming a channel member. If you would like to become a channel member, there is a link somewhere in the chat, I think, or definitely in the uh, description. Good to see you, Miho. All right, the next one. Let's get back to the lesson here. Summer, summer, playground. You might see a playground near an elementary school, but this is a great place for kids to hang out in the summer. Many American elementary schools will have a playground for children. They might have slides there. They might have some monkey bars. Those are not pictured, but monkey bars. You can hang from monkey bars and uh, kind of crawl across them. Monkey bars. When my kids were younger, we would hang out at the playground all the time. You know why? Because it was free. It was free. So we would go to the local elementary school. We have about seven or eight in our town. So when the kids got bored at one elementary school, we might go to the other one, a playground. It's free. There are usually other kids there. And you can talk to parents about how hard it is to be a parent. The playground. The next term you might hear in the United States is it's packed. It's packed. A lot of times you will have to fight traffic in the summer, fight traffic. You might have some traffic jams. That's what we call um, a road that's very busy. We would say it has a traffic jam. I'm stuck in traffic. But if you go to an amusement park, it might be full of people. And if it is, you might hear, whoa, it's packed here today. It's packed here today. I have a sentence for you. It's packed is another way to say a place is really busy or there are a lot of people visiting. It's packed. You know what else you might see if it's packed? Long lines long lines you can see from that picture the people are just standing there they're waiting this looks like it might be in an airport but you might have long lines at the ice cream stand i don't have a slide for that but the ice cream stand is a place that sells ice cream usually just in the summer so you might have some long lines there. Just in case you're ever in the UK, I think Australia, New Zealand, they have a different name for lines. In the United States, we call them lines. In the UK, you might hear Q. So it's just like the letter Q, only it's spelled like that. Q U E U E Q. Oh, the Q is so long. You will not hear that in the United States. You will hear, oh my gosh, look at the line. It's so long. We're going to be waiting forever. Next one. In the summer, you might take a road trip. A road trip. That is when you get in your car. And you drive 
to somewhere that's far away. Last summer, I took a road trip. It's on the channel somewhere. I started in my state of Maine and went all the way down to North Carolina. There are four parts on the channel. If you want to take a road trip with me and learn a little English, check that out. I think it's called, just look up Speak English with this guy, Road Trip. Should be four parts. I think I have a playlist with it too. All right, check in the chat just to make sure there are no questions. Manual says, I hate it when it's packed. Yeah, absolutely. Hate it when it's packed. Oh, wait a second. Is that, that looks almost Italian. It's a, a writer, I think. Well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Although it could be French. French and uh, that looks almost, because Delhi scrittori, that, that does seem, that does seem, I don't know what the first word is though. That does seem Italian. All right. Just checking the chat, making sure everybody's doing well. Hey, if um, you're going to be going on a road trip though, you might have to pay some tolls. And you'll pay those tolls at a toll booth. Unfortunately, there are a lot of highways in the United States where you have to pay money to use them. The main highway in the in my state of Maine is called the main turnpike. And you do have to pay tolls there. Just to use the road, you have to pay tolls. I think I have a sentence here for you. Many American highways cost money to drive on. We say you have to pay a toll. And let me make that a little bigger. The place you pay your toll is the toll booth. The toll booth. You pay these tolls at a toll booth. Maybe, maybe. So Jamie, my wife, she is in the chat. She uses the turnpike, the highway where you have to pay tolls. She uses the turnpike every day. So she has something called an easy pass. So if you live in the United States, you might have one of these. You still have to pay tolls but the good thing about it is you don't have to stop at the toll booth. So it's a little cheaper. You get a discount if you have an easy pass and you can use a different lane. If you look in that picture, there's part of the road that's going under what we might call scaffolding. So when you go through that, the easy pass is probably on your windshield. You don't have to slow down to pay a toll. You still have to pay a toll. It just might be a little cheaper. If you have an easy pass, you get a discount on the tolls and you don't have to stop. You can drive in a special lane. Yep. Both of our cars, we have an easy pass. You put it on the windshield. That's the front of the car that's glass that protects you. In the UK, you might hear it called a windscreen. Yeah, it makes it handy. It makes it convenient. You do not have to stop and pay a toll. Well, you still have to pay. It's just cheaper. You get a discount. I don't know what the discount is. Maybe 20% off. Jamie might know. But it's a little cheaper if you have your easy pass. This would be a total bummer if this happens to you on a road trip. But we call that a flat tire. Your tires should be pumped up. That's the phrasal verb we might use. Your tires should be pumped up. 
you will get better gas mileage if your tires are pumped up. But every so often, you might run over something sharp and that will cause your tire to lose air and go flat. And we call that a flat tire. Here's a sentence for you. You might get a nail in your tire, which causes it to go flat. Yeah, that would be a total bummer. If this happens to you on a road trip, it probably means you have to pull over to the side of the road and fix that flat or call somebody, pay them to fix the flat for you because you don't know how to change a tire like me. I would have to call, um, we have something called triple A or I might call a tow truck. They would come and they would fix it and I would have to pay. Whoa. So Jamie says, I use my toll pass so much that I get a 50% discount. Tolls can be really expensive. Oh, good. Reza asked the question. I am not sure. Jamie, do you remember? Yeah. Jamie also had a flat tire on the turnpike. And I believe she was late for work. A couple, couple years ago, I think that happened. Um, how much is a toll? They keep going up all the time. But I think there's one toll in between our house and Jamie's school. And I think it's $3. It's a $3 toll. So when you go down, you have to pay $3. And when you come back, you have to pay $3. So $6 a day. But if she has a 50% discount, it would only be $3 a day. But, and I think there's another toll when she gets on at her work to come home. There might be another dollar. So the easy pass is good. The easy pass is good. Hey, yeah, Manuel. He says, fortunately, modern cars have an automatic detection. Oh, and refill of air for 100 kilometers. Okay. I don't think my car does, but the way they're making tires these days or nowadays, I think that was a term from last week's lesson. The way they are making tires nowadays, we see fewer flats. So not as many flat tires on the side of the highway, but every so often you will see one. All right, and Jamie says, I pay two tolls to come home and one to go to work. $2.75. Oh yeah, to get in our state, to get in, you have to pay a toll on that highway, $4. Hey, if you ever go driving in New York City, like you, you won't need to probably because they have a great subway system there, but there are a couple bridges you have to cross if you are driving and the tolls are really expensive, like $8, eight American dollars. So it's like $16 to go in and out of the city. So, oh, and hey, Aaron is here. He's going to New York really soon. Luckily, he won't have a car. Yeah, the subway is great to get around. Yeah, Betty Lou asks, interstate? Question mark. Sometimes you will hear highway or sometimes you will hear interstate. Interstate literally means that road goes through at least two states. An interstate will go through at least two states. A very famous highway in the United States is called I-95. I is short for interstate. I-95 goes from my state of Maine all the way down to Florida. You can take one road, I-95, get from my state all the way down to the tip of Florida, 
which is called Key West, Florida. I think it's like 1,500 miles. Yeah. Good point, Betty. Thanks for bringing that up. Hey, and Chevcat, you just entered. Welcome from Turkey. You might also go backpacking during the summer. For your summer vacation, one of the activities you might do, backpacking. Let's talk about this. Now, the people in the picture, they are wearing backpacks on their back. So backpack is a noun. Those people are wearing backpacks. But you can turn that into a verb. So those people are also backpacking. You might hear hiking. You might hear trekking. But I wanted to use a term you might not be familiar with, and that would be backpacking. And it looks like those backpacks are so big that they are probably backpacking for a few days. So you'll hear those terms, going on a hike, going on a trek. I think that's more in the UK. You won't hear that as much in the United States. I'm hearing something in the other room there. Hopefully you can't hear that. And then uh, backpacking. So all three of those terms you will hear. That just means taking a walk in the woods. You might even spend the night in the woods which looks like they might be doing that. Or maybe a mountain. Looks like they might be backpacking in the mountains. The next one, camping. So it is possible these people will be camping. And when you camp, you go out into nature. You might have a tent. We'll talk about that in a minute. That orange thing in the front of that picture we call that a tent. And you could turn that into a verb. What are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm going tenting. I'm going tenting. That means you take a tent, that thing in the picture, that person is uh, sitting in their tent. You take a tent, you go out into the woods, you go out into nature, and you spend some time there, probably overnight, tenting. Camping, tenting, is there any difference? No, probably not. But you probably will be using a tent if you go tenting. If you go camping, you might use a tent, but you also might use an RV. And if you can see that in the picture, that is what we call an RV. It's like a big van. It might have a kitchen inside. It might have a bathroom inside. An RV is short for recreational vehicle. You will never hear it called a recreational vehicle. But you can turn that into a verb and you could go RVing. So let's review. You could go camping. That is when you are spending time in nature, pretty much. But you could go tenting, and if you do, you'll be camping with a tent, or you could go camping with an RV. You could call it RVing. Yeah, so some people might RV for the whole summer. It's like one big, long road trip with an RV. And they might stay in something called a campground. I can write that in the chat. Campground. That is where you'll often stay if you're tenting or you're going RVing. It's one word. Campground. Campground. So you may take your tent to a campground and spend the night. Hope that helps. Just checking the chat. Just checking the chat here. So, oh Reza, I'll get to that in a minute. Good, good question. So, oh, next week's lesson is going to be when we take 
two words in English and smush them together. I need to write down glamping. That is not on my list, but let's talk about it right now. So Jamie said, I hate tenting. Let's put that up. So she hates camping in a tent. She's more of a glamping girl. I need to talk about glamping in next week's lesson. So glamping, notice it's got a little bit of camping in that word. Camping is one part of it. But what's the glam? What's the glam? That's short for glamorous. So if somebody goes glamping, that means they have electricity, they have a nice bathroom. It's really fancy camping. Glamping. Thank you, Jamie. You should be you should be on camera. We could talk about glamping. Yeah, so if if people don't like going out into nature with the bugs and We'll talk about bug spray in a minute and not taking a shower and not having electricity. We might call it glamping. It's when you go camping and you have all the conveniences of life. You have electricity. You have running water. You can use the bathroom in a bathroom. You don't have to dig a hole. Glamping. Good call, Jamie. Good call. Thank you. I knew I married you for a reason. There, there are many reasons. There are many reasons I married her. Um, oh, and Aaron. A Aaron. Yes, he has shown me that uh, Italian highways also have something like an easy pass. Yeah. Good call. Good call. Something on campfires while camping. Is it to make a campfire or to set a campfire? Hmm. You might hear, um, hey, are we going to have a campfire when we go camping? Are you going to light a fire when we go camping? So that's how I would say it. Some people will have a campfire in their backyard and they might toast marshmallows. I didn't put that. I didn't put some mores either. Hang on. Let's do a Google search. I believe I've talked about s'mores on the channel before. So campfire. Hopefully you know campfire. Thank you, Dennis. Let's talk about uh, s'mores. I think I can do it here. Sharing. It takes a little while to share. I wish it was easier. So you might toast some marshmallows over a campfire. And if you do, you might make some s'mores. Let's make that really big. You need three ingredients to make a s'more. S'more. You need the marshmallow and you need to toast it over a campfire. And then you need a chocolate bar. Hershey bars work really well. That's some American chocolate there. I don't know if you like Hershey's. It's American, I think, unless a, a company bought them out. Um, probably not as good as Cadbury, in my opinion, but Hershey's. Get a thin Hershey bar. Get a marshmallow that's toasted. And then make a sandwich with two graham crackers. Then you have what we call some more. That's a some more. I think that is truly American. Please let me know in the chat. Do you make some mores in other countries or is that just an American thing? I mean, it's so darn unhealthy that I would think it was just American, but I don't know. They are good though. You have to make sure you don't burn your marshmallow, though. All right, Audie says he loves to, oh, rent an RV. Jamie and I have talked about that. They can be expensive. We talked about renting in the last lesson, last week, about the prom. So when you rent something, you get it for a period of time, then you need to give it back. 
Oh, RVing. So Audie says, oh, I'd love to rent an RV and drive around the USA. This is my dream before I die. So this might be on Audie's bucket list. A list of things you want to do while you're young enough to do them. I would love to do that as well. I would love to do that. All right, Ibrahim would also like to rent an RV or live in an RV. That's becoming popular on YouTube. Um, channels, there are so many channels where people will just live in their RV. One guy that Jamie and I love to watch, he's a Canadian guy. His name is Foresty Forest. I'll give Foresty Forest a shout out. He doesn't have any idea who I am, but uh, he's a good channel to follow. Betty, they're not he- they're not healthy. That's true. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Stacy. Stacy says I've never tried s'mores. Looks unhealthy, but tasty. Yeah, isn't that most things in life? The most unhealthy things are the tastiest things. Harry, what's going on? Hope you're doing well over there in Indonesia. Our friend from Tajikistan is here. Welcome. What's the next one we got here? We did tenting. We did RVing. But we haven't done this one. Drive-in. Hey, Betty says Wikipedia. Yeah. I love me some Wikipedia. Love me some Wikipedia. Is that correct English? No. Will you hear native English speaker English speakers say I love me some? Yes, you will. I love me some Wikipedia. I love me some some mores. It's a little bit of slang, but if you want to sound a little bit more like a native English speaker, sometimes you have to ruin the grammar. I love me some drive-in movies. These are becoming more and more rare in the United States, but a drive-in movie is when you go see a movie, but not in a theater. You will go see it in your car and you will usually drive into a large parking lot and there will be a large screen there. And on that screen, they will project the movie. You can get some popcorn there. You might even put a speaker in your car. And if you look over here, I think you can see it. Um, There is a speaker on the right and you might hang that on your window so you can hear the movie. Now, usually in modern drive-ins, you will just turn on your car radio and you will be able to hear what's going on in the movie. You'll be able to hear the sound on the movie through your car radio. But uh, drive-in movies. My family, we've we've gone to some drive-in movies in the past. Unfortunately, our local drive-in movie theater, it closed down. Yeah. So they're not showing movies that I know of anymore. But the drive-in movie was right next to the amusement park. So there were times where we would go to the amusement park. When it got later, we would go to the drive-in movie during the summer. So if you want to go to a drive-in movie, you probably have to come to the United States pretty soon, within the next few years, because more and more are closing down, unfortunately. Uh, Freddie, good joke some more. Shouldn't you eat less? Yes. They're unhealthy, but they're so good. They're so good. Good. I tried to pick an American thing. So drive-in, such an American thing. No, drive-ins are not. You will have to pay a fee. Drive-ins are not free. So there usually is a gate or we might call it an admissions booth. There's a little booth, just like a toll booth. There's a little booth right before you get to the drive-in. There's a small road. 
So that's how you, you pay for your drive-in movie, but they usually charge you by the car load. So it's, if you have one person in the car, two people in the car, four people in the car, it's all the same price, just one price. We're going to be talking about piling into the car. I think we have piling. I think we have piling coming up. Piling. I hope so. You can pile into the car, or you can cram into the car. It's when you have a lot of people in one car. You just all pile in and go somewhere. Making sure you have a seatbelt for everyone, though. All right, the next one tank top tank top hey if you would like to become a channel member i made a video this morning maybe some channel members have seen it already there's a term another term a slang term for tank top that i am not going to mention on the channel but there's a bonus lesson if you would like for members i try to make everything free here i don't have like special English lessons for members. I think that's just not a, a good way to do it. Um, but if there is something I'm uncomfortable with talking about on camera for everyone to see, I will make a video about it. And there is a bonus lesson about tank tops. But if your arms are swole, if you have big arms, unfortunately, my arms are not that big. But if you have big arms and it's hot out, you might want to show them off with a tank top. They come in all colors. That white one has a special name. Members check that out. But they come in all colors. And you can see the man pictured. He's, he's, his arms are pretty swole. His arms are pretty swole. Slang term for big arms. Swole. Okay. you might want to wear a tank top i'm sure it's a nice thing to wear in the summer get a little suntan we talked about that last week we'll talk about it again in a minute so let me know in the chat do you like wearing tank tops that is what we call a shirt that looks like that sleeveless sleeveless a sleeveless shirt is another way to say tank top. And Fayez said, a farmer's tan, a farmer's tan. It does cause you to have a farmer's tan. In English, here's some more slang. Actually, no. Um, a farmer's tan is when your tan on your face, your tan on your forearms, we might call this your forearm, but your upper arm is not tan. I kind of have a farmer's tan here. See, this part is whiter. This part is darker. A farmer's tan. So think about somebody working in the sun for a long period of time and they're wearing a shirt. They will get a farmer's tan. Thank you, Fayez. Just check in the chat. Hmm. Harry says drive-in movies are not common in his country. Yeah, it might be only um, only an American thing. I don't know. Well, Audie says maybe. Oh, you've been? Oh, okay. But Audie says he went to a drive-in twice with his girlfriend, but it was in LA. It was in Los Angeles, I think. So probably mostly an american thing oh maybe japan miho is from japan maybe they do have drive-in movie theaters in other places um a jersey so in the united states at least a jersey is worn by somebody playing sports yeah whenever you hear jersey in the united states think of somebody playing a sport Oh, Freddie, you need to buy some muscles before you wear a tank top. 
Can you buy those somewhere? Got to get swole. Every, every spring, I say, I'm going to get swole for the summer. Never happens. Never happens. I'm too busy making YouTube videos. Too busy. Too lazy sometimes. All right. Ibrahim is going to get some lunch. Have a good one. The next one. Flip-flops. Those type of shoes. You might hear them called sandals, but those are definitely flip-flops. Great to wear in the summer. Great to wear in the beach. And if you've ever worn these shoes, they do make a sound. And I think that's where the name comes from. Flip-flop. You, you make a funny sound when you're wearing flip-flops. The shoe tends to hit the heel of your foot. Heel. We talked about heels last week with the prom, right? Hopefully you tune in every week for these lessons. Learn so much. At least I hope you do. Yes. Los Angeles. Shift cat. Oh, farmers, they'd never wear t-shirts. They don't. All right. Next one. I think this is a Portuguese term. I think this comes from Brazil, but we use it here and we have them. Mosquitoes. That little insect is called a mosquito in English. I think in Portuguese too. And unfortunately, they like to come out on summer nights and they will bite you and they will try to suck your blood unless you get them first. You might, you might swat them. You swat at the mosquitoes. I don't like mosquitoes. Luckily, we have something called bug spray and bug spray helps get rid of the bugs mosquitoes they're the biggest culprits the biggest culprits the ones that cause trouble we call them culprits and i have a verb for you that might be new bug spray helps repel the bugs that might bite you Bug spray helps repel bugs that might bite you. You also might hear it called bug repellent. Repel is the verb, like to keep away, to keep off of you. But repellent is the noun. So you'll probably hear bug spray, but if you go into the store, you might see bug repellent written. Most Americans don't say, oh, I forgot my bug repellent. Can I borrow yours? We will say bug spray. Just shorter words, you know, shorter words. Bug spray, it keeps the bugs away. It keeps the bugs away. Ice pack. That is something else you might need. Didn't mean to do that. That is something else you might need, an ice pack. And in that picture, there are two ice packs. An ice pack is a bag filled with ice so you can cool down your skin if you have an injury. It looks like that one person hurt their ankle, so they are applying an ice pack to their ankle. And the other person... They are wearing a blue tank top and they are applying an ice pack to the back of their neck. The next one is aloe vera, aloe vera gel. This actually, I think is Spanish. I think it's an English word that we took from the Spanish language, aloe vera. In that picture, you will see an aloe vera plant. That is what an aloe vera plant looks like. But it is also made into gel. And that bottle is aloe vera gel. 
and, and why? Why do you need aloe vera gel? Well, for sunburns. We did talk about sunburns a couple weeks ago, I think with skin problems. So last week's lesson had the term sunburn. One remedy for sunburns is aloe vera gel. And a remedy, if that is a new term for you, a remedy is something that fixes a problem, a remedy. One remedy for sunburns is aloe vera gel. Now, the best thing is not to get a sunburn in the first place, but sometimes accidents happen. The next one is long lost relatives. Yeah, during the summer, if you have vacation, you may take a road trip to visit long lost relatives. That's a term we use in English. What's a long lost relative? Long lost relatives are people related to you, cousins, uncles, that you haven't seen in a long time. Long lost relatives are people related to you that you haven't seen in a long time. What are you doing this summer? Oh, I'm going to visit my long lost relatives out West. You might hear that. Oh, I'm going to visit my long lost relatives in Canada. People you haven't seen in a long time, but they are related to you. So cousins, uncles, sisters, probably not. People that are not your mom, your dad, your brother, or your sister, or your children. They're distant relatives, cousins, nephews, uncles, nieces. Maybe we should do a lesson on terms we use for family, but long lost relatives. Yeah. And I don't know, the picture that I picked, they actually might be visiting the hospital, but um, I thought those two people could be long lost relatives. So I picked it, but I actually think there's a doctor in the background. So maybe not the best picture for long lost relatives. Just, just look at the two people in the front of the picture. Looks like they're catching up, catching up. I thought I had a, hmm, I thought I had a, maybe it didn't save. Um, but to catch up with somebody. Okay. I got, I got one here. Okay. You might catch up with long lost relatives. And what is catching up? That is when you find out what people have been doing for people you haven't seen for a long time. So long lost relatives, maybe it has been a couple years since you've seen them. So you might catch up with them. Hey, what have you been up to? What have you been doing for the last two years? Oh, they might talk about their job. They might talk about their family. Catch up. You might hear that in English too. If you have a friend and you've just been so busy, you might say, hey, we need to catch up sometime. That would mean maybe go out to dinner, have a conversation on the phone, catch up, find out what people have been doing that you haven't seen in a long period of time. Hope that makes sense. Hope that makes sense. Let's check the chat. What? Aloe vera tree at your house? Audie has a great house, by the way. He is a gold member. He is part of the uh, volley space that we have. And we send videos back and forth to each other. All right. All right. Hey, well, question. I get what you say, probably. What should I do to improve my English? Well, you are in the right place. I think lots and lots of listening to English teachers, I think is really helpful. Really helpful. So you're in the right place. Keep listening. Keep watching videos from YouTube. My videos, 
There are some other great videos. I'm so, sorry. There are some other great teachers on YouTube. Touch base. Yeah. Hey, we need to touch base. I haven't seen you in a long while. Hey, we need to catch up. How you been? Yeah. Touch base. You might also use that in business too. touch base. So if you're working on a project and you want to touch base with someone, you might get their advice. You might ask for their opinion. Hey, uh, before you leave today, we need to touch base. So yeah, touch base has another, um, couple meetings. All right. Your immediate relative. Yeah. When I hear immediate relatives, I think brother, sister, mother, father, son, daughter, those are, are your immediate relatives. More distant relatives would be people like aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews, nieces. Wait a sec, Danny, I mentioned you earlier. I thought that you would not be here live because you are kayaking in, in New York. But welcome. Oh my gosh. Danny, thanks for uh, catching up with us. Thanks for catching up. I like your videos most of the time. I like your videos most of the time. So maybe some that are not so good, but thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. All right. Next one. Got a couple more here, I think, for you. Get away. This can be a tricky one. Okay. Get away. Get away is a noun. My wife and I went on a little getaway to the beach. Get away is a noun when it is spelled like that. All one word. G-E-T-A-W-A-Y. A getaway. But it can also be a phrasal verb. Get away. Two separate words. I've been working so many hours. I just need to get away on vacation. So get away can be a noun or it can be a verb to get away. But that's when you just leave everything and go on vacation. Yeah. Uh, in fact, my wife and I, Jamie, next week for summer vacation, we are going to be celebrating our 20th anniversary. We have been married for 20 years and we're going on a little getaway. Just down the road a little ways to the beach. We're going to spend the night get a nice dinner, get away from the kids for a little while. I don't think my own, my kids do not watch my lessons. So I think I can say, yeah, sometimes it's nice to get away from the kids. Uh, my kids are older now, so they're, they're pretty cool. But you know, when they're little kids, you just have to take care of them so much it can be a little stressful. So sometimes we would just get away for a night, forget about the kids for a little while. So a getaway is usually a small vacation, a getaway. You might hear this during business. Um, maybe you, you have a meeting. Hey, can you get away from the office for about an hour? We can have lunch, talk over some plans. So get away. It's a good one to know. Get away. The next one. Maybe for those rainy days during the summer you might play some board games, some board games, some very popular board games in the United States are Scrabble, Monopoly, Checkers and Chess are popular board games. Usually played with a board, usually played with something flat. If you look in the middle of that picture, there's a flat piece of cardboard. It's a board game. Let me know in the chat, what are your favorite board games? Or maybe, maybe you don't like board games. We'll talk about another way you can spell board in a minute. But wait a second, Dennis, you've done this for the last couple of weeks and I do appreciate it. It's a, it's a super chat 
from Dennis. Wait, I got a little something for you, Dennis. Thank you so much. Go. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Dennis, that is so helpful. I need to take a little, little drink of water. I've been um, talking so much. But Dennis, thank you so much. I really appreciate the super chats. Thank you so much. So board, board games. Be careful. We have another way that you can spell board. Some people get bored when they play board games. Notice the two different spellings. B-O-R-E-D. That means not interested. I hope you are not bored with this lesson. Not interested. But some people can get bored when they play board games. The... Um, adjective we would use is boring. So you might find those board games boring. You might get bored if you play board games. Jamie, my wife, loves board games. I find them a little bit boring, but they're a good way to hang out with the family sometimes. Yeah, get away healthy, relaxing. Absolutely. Sometimes you just need to clear your head. Get away for a little while. Clear your head. Reza says, Brent, you can drive to Montreal for a getaway. And you know what? I have before. My family and I have gone on a little getaway to Montreal before. One time we went to Montreal and then we drove over to Quebec City. It's a great time. We liked Quebec City a little more than we did Montreal. But Cluedo. Oh, I wonder if that's like clue in the United States. Is it where you have to find if somebody has been like um, hurt with a candlestick or rope? Clue? I don't know, is that the same one? Oh, Stacy, I like board games. I've never been bored playing board games. Well, you and Jamie would get along really well. She likes it. Oh, Settlers of Catan. I've never heard of that game. Oh, yes. Hey, after this lesson, in a few minutes, there is a link in the description. I'll be going over to my other channel for some more questions and answers for about a half an hour. Yeah, Jamie, I'm sorry. I need to play a I need to play a board game with Jamie soon. She loves games. She loves card games too. Card games are just played with cards. So in English we have poker, we have gin. Ah, so it's the same. Yeah, Jamie, we need to play some board games this summer. I promise I will. Ario says, my favorite board game is Monopoly. Oh, but yeah, you could play video games. Mm -hmm. You can play video games. I got a real quick, let me see if I can share this. I found this article about five places, five countries where Monopoly has been banned. Let's see if I can add it to the stream. I think I might be able to. It just takes so long. And I know you are busy. I don't want to waste your time finding these sites, but got it now. All right, six places. Six places where Monopoly has been banned. There are a bunch of commercials that show up on here. But this is from the site called uh, Monopoly Land, I think. So six places. See if these places sound familiar. China. It has been banned in China, not now, but at one time Monopoly was banned in China. Cuba, at one time Monopoly was banned. If something is banned, that means you can't have it. Russia, at one time, when Russia was part of the Soviet Union, 
Monopoly, the board game, was banned. Hungry. It was banned in Hungary at one time. It was when they were uh, like, they weren't part of the Soviet Union, but they were behind the Iron Curtain. It's what we call it in English. What? USA? No. It's never been banned in the USA, but sometimes... Buckingham Palace. That's where the queen lives. Uh, But in the United States, the um, board game has been banned just in families. Like it might be banned in somebody's house in the United States because there have been too many fights over the game. You're cheating. Do you know what cheating is? When somebody doesn't play by the rules. So no. Monopoly has never been banned in the United States, but some families may have banned it because there have just been too many fights. Uno. You like you like Uno? Arroni? I think Arroni will be in the United States very soon, and maybe we can play some Uno. Maybe we can play some Uno. Poland is in the house. Welcome. Yeah, this is huge. Playing board games with children is huge. Why? Well, they get to learn what it feels like to win, what it feels like to lose. They have to wait to take their turn. That's what we call it in English. If four people are playing a board game, they can't go at all at once. They have to wait. And waiting for your turn is very important. For children, they have to learn how to wait. You can't always be rolling the dice in Monopoly. You have to wait for other people to take their turn. Cheating. Nobody likes a cheater, right, Betty? Nobody likes a cheater. All right, grandkids like playing Uno. Like playing Uno. Uno's pretty fun. Uno's pretty fun. Maria says she likes Monopoly. For me, Monopoly just takes a long time and sometimes I get bored. During Monopoly, I think, oh, I could be making English lessons to help people with their English. So, all right, yeah. Uno, Naomi says Uno. I like Uno. I like Uno. As long as you have like four people, three or four people, if it's just two people, can get a little boring, but with four people, it's good. It's fun. What else do we have here? Summer camp. You might go to summer camp. And this is where usually children will go away. Maybe for the day, they will do fun activities at this camp. Things like rowing on a boat. They might go rowing. They might go horse riding. They might toast marshmallows. They might come home at night. If they do, it's a day camp. But they also might sleep over. There are two types of summer camps. Day camp, children will go there just for the day and sleep at home. Sometimes they will spend the whole summer there and they will even sleep over. We would call that an overnight camp. Okay. So if uh, I actually worked at a camp, summer camp one time, it was an overnight camp. I went home at night, actually filmed a TV show called Bug Juice for the Disney Channel. So I would film during the day and then I would come home at night but the children on the show they would stay overnight and it was an overnight camp hope that helps and I also hope you've enjoyed this English lesson I hope you know a little bit more about summer activities that you can do during vacation if you want a little more English I am going to be heading over to my other channel Um, American English guy too. 
And there is a link in the description if you want to meet me over there. You can have some chats. It doesn't have to be just about um, summer vacation. It can be about pretty much anything. But this is the end of this English lesson on summer vacation. I would like to thank Dennis dropping that super chat. I do appreciate it. Thank you to all the channel members. Thank you, Anya, Maria, Aroni, for moderating the chat, just in case somebody was naughty. I don't think they were. Everybody was very nice. All right, so thank you all, English teacher. Thank you all. Oh, an hour late? Well, luckily, it is on replay. Yeah, we've been going a long time. There, uh, forgive you. Of course, I'll forgive you. Yulia's here. Hey, I didn't know you were here. See you later. All right. If you want, meet me over in the other channel in about, I don't know, two minutes or so. See you over there. <laughs>